India, the land of scenic beauty, is filled with a vibrant cultural heritage. Its achievements are not only distinctive, unique and original, but also of aesthetic beauty as revealed in art, architecture, music, literature and philosophy. The flora and fauna of India is equally rich. Peninsular India is bordered with beautiful beaches, emerald islands, forests and pasture lands. The Ghats, the hill ranges that run down the eastern and western sides of the peninsula are still covered with remnants of ancient tropical forests. To the north of India, the Earth's ancient landmass crushed continental plates to create the world's youngest and highest mountains, the Himalayas. The deserts of Western India are inhabited by people dressed in resplendent hues and balanced by the wetlands on the east with a profusion of forests and trees. The diversity in physical features and climatic regions has given rise to a rich cultural expression unknown in any other country. The Stone Age, the earliest age of the human era, finds its first artistic expression in human civilization. Inspired by the surrounding beauty of nature, birds and animals, human beings started painting in the caves in which they lived. The images depicted activities important to their lives, such as hunting and dancing. The story of the continuous stream of Indian art opens in the Indus Valley, dating back to the 3rd millennium BC, which reflect the highest refined taste of the people. Whether it was in urban planning, in house building, pottery, ornament design, cutting of stones, ivory carving and weaving. This testimony of the ancient civilization shook the world of archaeology with its discovery. The earliest inhabitants of the Indian subcontinent were the Dravidians. The Dravidians were subdued and pushed to the south by the Aryans. Here, the colourful and dynamic Dravidian culture has survived and continues even in our times, enriched and enhanced, no doubt, by the Aryan impact. The Aryans were a dominant force in the subcontinent. It is generally believed that they began their migratory movements from southern Russia and took divergent paths from 1300 BC onwards. The Koshala and the Magad dynasties are the most ancient dynasties of India. Both these kingdoms flourished in historical times. Prasenajit was the ruler of Koshala, today called Uttar Pradesh. Ajatashatru, son of Bimbisara, founded the city of Patliputra modern Patna, which was to develop into a great center of learning and commerce. The Gupta period is best known for its developments of temples in the history of India. Some of the finest expressions of art, literature, science and governance arose and flourished during this period. Not surprisingly, this period is often referred to as the Golden Age of India. Indian culture is closely related to its ancient spiritual texts. The Vedas are amongst the most ancient of all literatures in human history. There are four principal Vedas, Rig, Sama, Yajur and Atharva. In the Vedas, the gods are known as Devas.
The chanting of Vedas is as old as its composition. The Vedic chanting in Gurukuls has been a part of Hindu society. The Upanishads are the quintessence of Hindu spiritual wisdom. They were composed during the period between 800 to 200 BC. Indeed, the major Upanishads are associated with the four principal Vedas. The Puranas are ancient texts and refer to the myths of creation of the universe and to its preservation and regeneration. Bharata's Natya Shastra, the world's most ancient treatise on drama, music and dance, is a complete work in Sanskrit, which is part of the living heritage of India, its Sampradaya. All the fragmentary dance dramas and performance art styles existing today in India are to a certain extent linked to this monumental treatise. All the classical dances of India, for instance, not only draw their sustenance from the Natya Shastra, but are also believed to have originated from temple dance traditions. Orissi dance is the classical dance form of Orissa and has the distinction of being the oldest, going by sculptural evidence. Its origin lies in the temples. The rhythm, the postures or bhangis, the mudras or gestures used in Odissi dance have a distinctive quality of their own. Odissi dance was greatly influenced by the bhakti movement and deals largely with the love theme of Radha and Krishna. Bharatnatyam is one of the most sophisticated of the classical dances. It was at one time also called Devadasi Attam. Bharatnatyam is a highly ritualistic dance of South India, particularly the states of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. The dance depicts the excellence of Nataraj, the lord of dance, who was none other than Shiva. Kuchipuri, the classical dance of Andhra Pradesh, was originally practiced by young Brahmin boys. Today, however, hundreds of dancers have been attracted to it by its dazzling dynamics. Kathakali is another form of classical dance drama, hailing from the state of Kerala. Every Kathakali dancer is a master of both the Tandav, which is the vigorous masculine style demanded by duels and for the passages of pure dance, and Lasya, the more lyrical style. And it is pure enchantment to see them change 
from the tandal to the lassia. Manipuri, the classical dance from the Sylvan state of Manipur, is a collage of varying dance kinetics. Rhythmic, swaying, sinuous and sometimes powerful. Manipuri dancing has its own gestural language, very subtle and minimalist, which is excessively soft and goes with the grace that qualifies it. Kathak is the classical dance of North India. The dance is performed with powerful footwork and includes complicated cross rhythms. In this dance, the sequences are so fast and rhythmic that one needs tremendous amount of practice to perform them. Classical music, which is defined by raga music, owes its origins to the primordial sound of Om and the chanting of the Vedic mantras. Out of it grew two forms of music, Hindustani classical music, a more emotional and freer construct of music, and the Carnatic form of music, strong and bhakti and demanding a tough discipline from its practitioner. <laughs> Pandavani is a famous folk song of Madhya Pradesh. The performer narrates the epics Ramayana and Mahabharata and presents the theme with dramatic gestures. The performer is accompanied by a group of musicians. Oh, <laughs> 
Sufiana Kalam is an instrument based folk song of Kashmir. The style of presentation of the song is unique. The performer is surrounded by the musicians. The Baul songs of West Bengal are melodious folk songs with a spiritual content. They are sung in the local dialect and can move people to ecstasy. Daskathya is a folk art form of Orissa. It is performed usually by two men. The performance owes its name to Daskathya, a musical instrument which is made of thick wood and which accompanies the performance. Pala is a long musical narrative, punctuated with explanations rendered by a singer, accompanied by a band of four or five persons. The singer describes episodes from the Mahabharat or Ramayana. The singer is equally adept at music as he is in poetry. <laughs> Ala Udal is the Virgatha or ballad of Uttar Pradesh. Usually the performer narrates the ballad with a heroic posture to set the mood. Rasiya is a folk song type sung during Holi, the festival of colors. The singers invite Krishna to come and play Holi with them. It's a popular folk song of Uttar Pradesh. <laughs> Mangniar is a community of folk singers from Rajasthan. Their songs are usually based on local love stories and their powerful voices can be heard across the deserts during still nights. Kirtan is a devotional song. It is the gift of the Bhakti movement in India and finds expression in many parts of India. The Kirtan is based normally on themes from Krishna Leela. Dashavatar from Maharashtra is a folk theatre form and it is performed in the village courtyard. It is one of the finest forms of performing the epics, Ramayana and Mahabharat, and other mythological episodes. <laughs> Sir, Karam, Muki, 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 Muki,
Jatra corresponds to the folk theater of Orissa. It is the enactment of a play with a full cast and comprises music, dance, song and dramatic conflict. Terukuttu is a total theatre form of Tamil Nadu. It comprises of ritual, literary and dramatic dialogues, rich in emotional content. The rich martial art tradition from Saraikela, a martial region of Jharkhand, gets its inspiration from the flexions of martial exercises. The delicately cast mask, however, succeeds in portraying the emotional base of the performance. With more dramatic masks, Purulia Chao vibrates with a theatricality that makes our myths palpable. One of the most powerful martial dances is Thangta of Manipur. The dance is performed with sword, spear and shield. It is basically a mock fight of attack and defense. <laughs> Amongst the many tribal dances of India is the Munda dance performed by the tribal community of Bihar. The Munda community celebrates the beauty and gifts of life, as also the environment and the seasons. This is the Chang dance. The Chang community hails from Nagaland. It is performed at the time of the festival called Pong Lum. The Chang community is one of the most colorful community amongst the tribal groups. Tapetagulu is a drum dance of Andhra Pradesh. In this dance, the sound of the drum and the ankle bells blend well with the songs that accompany the dance. The Apatani tribal dance comes from Arunachal Pradesh, the land of the rising sun in India and the home of the Apatanis. In this dance, the women folk decorate themselves with naturally distilled colors and come out in their finery. The Dorla dance is a tribal dance of Madhya Pradesh. It is a harvest dance, typical of the Dorla community. Boys and girls perform Bihu, the harvest dance of Assam, to the accompaniment of Bihu, which are basically love songs. The dhol, the drum, the pipa, a buffalo horn pipe, toka, the bamboo clapper, 
and symbols are used while performing the dance. Garya is a harvest dance from Tripura. At the time of harvest, they celebrate with a gaiety and a sense of fun to get inspiration for hard work that looms ahead. <laughs> Zoma Lok is a folk dance of the Lepcha community of Sikkim. This celebration through dance is performed at the time of planting, sowing and harvesting. The dummy snow lion dance is called Singini Cham, the dance of Sikkim. The snow lion is considered an important cultural symbol of the state and is elaborately depicted in the Singini Cham or the snow lion dance. Napti is a recreational dance from Himachal Pradesh. But the version of the Napti danced at the time of the Dasera festival in Kullu acquires a ceremonial character. Ghaya is a festival dance of Haryana. It is performed during the festival of Holi. Sehra is another folk dance of Uttar Pradesh. It is a recreational dance. Kalvelia is a popular folk dance of Rajasthan. The bean or pungi is the main instrument used in this dance. The kinetics of this dance resemble the dance of the snake. Tera Thali is performed by two or three women from the same community called the Kamara community. The dancers remain seated throughout the performance. There are 13 modes of cymbals and clapping and usually 13 cymbals which are tied to different parts of the dancer's body which the dancer strikes in rhythm without missing a beat. Somana Kunita is the folk dance of Karnataka. Somana means the mask. When the goddess is taken out for the procession in the village, usually Soma comes out first. Soma is considered to be the protector of womenhood. Tayyam is an imposing ritual dance from Kerala to evoke the goddess. With full makeup and costume, the dancer becomes the Tayyam. The dancer first goes through an elaborate ritual of possession and then executes the dance. Karagam is a popular folk dance of Tamil Nadu. It is also known as a ritual dance. The string puppet 
is believed to be the oldest one in India. These shows also narrate the epics of the Ramayana and Mahabharat, but have lately adopted social themes as well. The glove puppet is different from the performance point of view. The whole episode of any theme is narrated with the help of the hands bearing glove puppets. Shadow puppet shows are an elaborate play of light and shade, an ancient form of the Sonne Lumiere, through which the story is narrated to song, dialogue and music. Pottery and terracotta work is a household craft of almost every state of India. Pottery has tremendous potential for various uses. Artisans are rich with their traditional artistic skills and can make any kind of pottery. The stone carving tradition is almost pan-Indian. The craftsmen use different stones for different images. In Orissa, they work mainly on soapstone, but some use sandstone and other hard stones as well to make traditional figures comparable in beauty to the old temple sculptures. Carving is an age-old craft. The wood carvers across the country produce a variety of wooden items. Besides household items, different divinities are also carved as per their Shastric and iconographic depictions. Wood inlay craft is different from wood carving. Here craftsmen make a picture of any kind on the soft wood and then the cut out picture is inlaid with hard woods of contrasting colors. Cane work is an important craft of Northeast India. The craftsmen make varieties of baskets, bags and other containers. They also make decorative items. In South India, banana fiber is used more in crafts. Dolls and other items are being made out of it as well. The skilled craftsperson can give any shape to the simple banana fiber within a short time. Weaving is a famous craft and spreads across the country. It is a traditional craft and has gained tremendous support from the market in India and abroad. In a family, every member is involved in this craft and use the traditional patterns of weaving.
Embroidery is also a traditional craft, with every part of India boasting of a unique style. There are places where every member of the family is involved in this work. They make different products that range in size from small handkerchiefs to large bed sheets. North India is famous for its Zardozi work, a unique embroidery with gold and silver thread. In the past 25 years, the craft has developed a definite export orientation. The Tankas of Buddhist India are a highly evolved form of cloth painting. First, the craftsman sketches the figure, replete with all details, and then paints later. Palm leaf painting is another painting craft. The craftsmen stitch the palm leaves and sketch the figures with the help of a hard nib. Then they apply the black colour over the figure. The painting comes out after cleaning the colour with the help of plain water. Papemashi is a traditional craft with a concentration of craftsmen hailing from Kashmir. Jewelry of various designs in gold is manufactured by goldsmiths throughout the country. Intricately carved gold pendants, set with rubies and pearls, are characteristic forms of Indian jewelry. Only the skilled craftsmen are capable of making a piece of enduring beauty. The Taj is one of the finest monuments of the world and is also known as the seventh wonder of the world. It too is a World Heritage Monument. The Agra Fort is an impressive fort created by the Mughal Emperor. It is a huge structure containing the Divani Am and the Divani Khas, the halls of royal and private audience. The Qutub Minar, an imposing victory tower, stands 73 meters high and was built towards the end of the 12th century. The magnificent Red Fort or Lal Kila carries an emotive value in the history of independent India. The Hava Mahal of Jaipur reveals Indian architecture of sophistication. In Jaipur and other parts of Rajasthan, Havelis were made by the Marwari Sates. They bear magnificent decoration of stone inlay and paintings. The Ajanta Caves were the home of Buddhist Sanghas from 200 BC to 600 AD. The living areas and prayer halls are profusely illustrated and windows allowing light to pass are an intrinsic part of its architecture. The caves of Udaigiri were cut out in the solid rock on the orders of King Karavela in Orissa. They were for the use of Jain ascetics. The Sun Temple at Konark is a breathtaking monument. It is a stunning masterpiece of the 13th century Kalanga style of art and architecture. It is one of the unrivaled marvels of ancient India. Khajuraho is famous for the excellence of architectural expression. The temple friezes are replete with erotic sculptures as well as visions of human beings in diverse activities. The lifelike expressions on the faces of these naikas and heroes make these amongst the most visited monuments in India. Mahabalipuram, with its rich temple architecture, stands on the sea beach of Tamil Nadu. It is home to the famous temples built like the Ratha and the world's largest bas-relief sculpture called the Penance of Arjuna.
The Buddhist temples of Sikkim are distinguished by their unique architecture. A large section of Sikkim's population follows the Buddhist religion. A cluster of Jain temples are seen inside the Jaisalmer fort. Parshwanath temple was constructed by an Oswal Sait named Jaising. The Golden Temple in Amritsar, Punjab is a wonderful example of the youngest temple architecture form of India. Churches in Goa were constructed by the Portuguese. All of them are of Western architecture and have been put on the World Heritage Map. This kaleidoscope of some of the highlights of Indian heritage will stir an emotional chord and inspire pride in the present generation of Indians anywhere in the world.